Hello, my name is Diego Arenas. I'm going to present a, this talk about um, a microservice architecture with Python and Docker containers that we built for a service um, almost a year ago and it, it's working and Docker facilitates all the implementation and we use Python to, as a glue code for, for the whole architecture. I'll, I'll present in detail what um, this encompass. Uh, but first, uh, my name is Diorenas. I'm a computer scientist and co-founder of Hikma Analytics. Um, we do data projects uh, around data science and machine learning um, and uh, the processing of uh, big volumes of data uh, when we can. We created a platform called Todo Licitaciones, which means all the tenders and is, is to search um, public tenders uh, of the government uh, in Chile and it's a web platform that basically you can search um, data um, for free. You have a free search engine that works uh, really well um, and uh, we have a notification service so you could follow um, companies, you can follow products and every time a new tender with that product or company uh, is published, you will receive an email, a notification email with, with this uh, alert. This project is fully implemented uh, using Docker and Python. This is how the website looks like. Um, you have a search engine, you can uh, click this follow button here and then uh, you will be um, receiving your um, notifications. You have a calendar and you have other like nice things to have, but the core thing is the, this search in engine and this notification service. And we are using uh, public um, data. How this started? Um, at the beginning, we started using um, Docker as a, a way to create a sandbox uh, in our own laptops. So we did a lot of data exploration. Uh, we created the first uh, data collection, collection scripts because we are um, querying a public API with this data and we created a lot of data wrangling uh, processes. Then we decided to create an architecture, um, give it some form, so we created a uh, designed a database. We at the same time we started, we designed this search engine, uh, we use Elasticsearch for that um, and our way to um, index this uh, this data, we created a list of services that we needed um, to implement this service. And finally, we created a, a website that communicates with the search engine. Finally, uh, we wrapped everything in a Python custom package. So all the ideas, all the data collection, data wrangling, um, and notification services are all together in a, a single Python package and that Python package is we, what we did was installing it in a um, Docker image and we created a pool of services basically querying or using this um, Python package like an umbrella but containing all the different services that we needed for the product to, to work. I'll explain more in detail in the next slides. A little bit of background. We started experimenting with Docker in, 2000, in late 2015, um, creating our first uh, explore, data exploratory environment. Um, since then, um, it, took, it took us a while to create our first uh, minimal minimum viable product that we finished in 2020 um, with all the things that uh, we wanted to include in this in this product and uh, the company started in early 2021 um, thanks to the uh, pan pandemic in this case we currently serve around 20,000 uh, users per month uh, that uh, users that are querying and we have a paid subscription that is for a, um, a few dozens of users that basically wants to receive this notification on their emails but the search engine is, is open to anyone everyone 
We used it mainly for data science. We created Jupyter notebooks. Um, we figured out how to download the data and kind of harmonize everything. We did the data exploration and then we created uh, our API. The server that we have, it's a, 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 for current standards, is a very kind of uh, a commodity service. Uh, it could be a bit small, but um, pretty standard. We currently we have uh, all the project is running 80 gigabytes of RAM uh, with four virtual CPUs, and we have um, 160 gigabytes storage by default. But we added some additional storage uh, because we have a lot of raw documents that we kind of then transform into a database and then to a search engine. Um, I'll explain the architecture in the next slides. We started a, with a smaller server. Um, basically, the service, the whole operation cost $20 per month, which was pretty convenient. And we have a smaller server that is kind of $5 per month, where we can experiment and test new features of the product. So overall, it's, it's, a, it's a very um, lightweight operation. Um, so the architecture. We have, at the moment, our users that search uh, in, the, in the web. They come up, they arrive to the website, todolicitaciones.cl, um, which is our platform. It's open. They, they can search. The, web, the, the platform is served uh, by a search engine. So the, the searches are, are very, very pretty, pretty quick, pretty fast, uh, for even for the official website that has this data um, and there users can filter and explore and navigate through different um, hyperlinks within the tenders and products and organisms like uh, uh, public offices and and so on so it's, it's kind of well crafted in terms of navigation and, and usability the search engine um, is fed by um, a Postgres database so when we collect the data, uh, we first we, our first touch point is a, a Postgres database that is uh, tailored to the data that we are working with, um, and that and the, and and the search engine basically will query uh, the latest changes in the database to kind of re-index or uh, add their additional um, data. Um, it's worth mentioning that um, each one of these services it, it runs in its own container um, and if we need so far we don't need the scalability in terms of uh, the database but uh, if we need the scalability uh, our, our plan is to kind of um, be flexible be scalable uh, through adding more um, containers that could support uh, the, the work of our website Um, and in terms of the Python custom package, we put all our services, all the things that we needed, into this Python library. So it's it's it encompass. Uh, we have a a main library where we have a lot of different sub modules. For example, the download engine. We have a, a specific some specific scripts to interact with the public. Um, Open data APIs and some other data sets, so um, that can be handled autonomously um, with with this uh, API with this service. So we basically can say download the latest, the last three days of data or the last uh, week of data of a specific um, or of a specific um, subject or like uh, from the tender public API and this script um, will basically start a container, will start downloading, storing the data locally uh, or to the uh, path that we pass to this script. And when it's finished, after it runs all the, downloads all the data from for, for three days, basically it will um, disappear and uh, it will run again the next time we call it. For for this, we run this uh, script three to four times per day. Automatically, we have a, a cron tab um, calling this um, this uh, 
a script within the library so we have the our docker image with our service sas and we have different um bash scripts calling uh, scheduled uh, calling um these runs basically to download the data um, our notification engine runs will run in a different um, container this is kind of a serverless architecture we just want to um, run the downloading or run the notification part and once it's finished basically it will shut it down and uh, liberate a space in the or and resources in the in the tiny server the notification engine as well runs uh, a few times per day and will notify each user uh, with the latest uh, additions or the latest documents, tenders published um, by the uh, official uh, entity in Chile. We have a Twitter engine that basically pushes tweets every 15 minutes uh, advertising the new tenders um and it does that automatically and we only run it during working hours but um it's it's, it's very uh configurable uh, we could say how many tweets we want to publish every time or how often we want to publish different tweets um we have the backup service that we run um at least once uh, per month scheduled and every time we do a major change uh, we try to uh, back up uh, our our data we have the logging as well as part of the of the library so uh, we know how many notifications have we we we, we sent every day or every time we know uh, how much data was downloaded um, every time that we run the download engine or the notification engine um, and that helps for us to debug if there is any errors that at the beginning we had um, quite often quite um, that that helps to debug and find the the, the, the problem that could be um, within the, the interactions of the of, of the code um, our main main problems uh, at the beginning were uh, we didn't realize was the server was too too small, so we just needed more uh, RAM memory, and that fixed fix, fixed uh, ninety percent of the of the issues, or maybe more of the issues that we had. And because we we, we had the service like going down um, every few days, and that fixed everything. Um, and then any anything that we want to add as a service, uh, basically the way we do it is through uh, adding as a as a new sub sub module in the in the Python uh, library, and um, it, it it can be scheduled independently. And at the same time, we add this code, this Python code, to deal with the service or the task that we need. We will create some uh, Bash scripts as part of the library. So those Bash scripts will be called uh, from a Chrome tab in the host machine, for example, and that's the way we schedule um, everything and, and, and we manage um, to run all these services, basically using a few Chrome tabs that um, deals with the calls to the scripts inside the library uh, that will execute in, in any of these tasks. And um, on top of this, or Using all these, we have an additional uh, dashboard uh, with th that we created with Streamlit, uh, again, another Python library, and it has its own container, basically, um, that is querying the database. So we, we will know, that's how we track um, uh, our login data, for example, and anything that is, is uh, any data, like the customers, how many notifications, how many um new users uh, per day per month etc um and we use kind of a um a continuous integration um pipeline development so anytime every time we change uh, something in this um container and or in this um sorry in this um python library we push the, the changes uh, we have our project in in github um, it's not uh, open source, I'm afraid, but 
um, happy to share um, our knowledge um, if you reach out after uh, the talk. But um, every time we change the dashboard, basically it will publish the latest results and will replace the container in the server that we published this 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 change and we will re uh, rerun and restart uh, a new dashboard or the new version of the dashboard um, automatically and the same for the for the services when we push um, any new change to our main um, branch in in this uh, library um, it will automatically deploy and, and copy the whole all the, the source code to the server and will uh, create a new um, Docker image for uh, the next time that any of these services is called, it will use the new version of the library. Um, and that that uh, helps a lot uh, in terms of maintainability and um, and ensure that uh, the service uh, always have the, has the latest changes um, in, in its operation. And basically this is... Um, one server, but this could be split in, in into many um, host machines if needed. But um, each one of these is one container, and these are on-demand container, like a serverless uh, architecture where if we need to download, it will be created and then will disappear after after a successful execution. And uh, the login will. Um, inform us um, if something went wrong. Uh, also, the notification engine will send us <laughs> um, an email every time something, any, anything fails, uh, because could be running the download engine, but it will have access to the modules that are in the notification engines, because it's the same, um, same overall Python library. So, um, I could go a little bit deeper in the custom Python library. So what we did was we wrapped our needs into a custom Python uh, package or library uh, that can be called to execute all any task that we need. Uh, we create this bash scripts, and these are we create basically a folder with uh, with scripts, and we put a lot of .sh um, um, files. So that 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 way. We we can interact with the library um, using the, the the terminal, and um, we didn't create it since the beginning. We didn't create a uh, Python uh, CLA um, CLI. Um, we have some services with with uh, arguments from the reading from the CLA, but um, the the mainly way to interact with the library is through, is through Bash scripts. Calling, calling Python within the Docker containers. Some of the libraries we use um, that could be um, useful, uh, Pandas, uh, TQDM for uh, progress bars because we need to wait a lot when we download, we, we send notifications, so that's a good way to keep track of what um, the software is, do is doing. Um, the email library, our notifications work on top of that. Uh, TweetPy, um, to send our tweets, request to basically download anything uh, from the open APIs that we have. Retry is pretty useful to when something fails, and that's quite often the case um, because too many requests in, in a period of time. Retry basically will um, will um, retry uh, the number of times you 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 ask, and every and uh, after a period of time that you also define. Config parser uh, to read from from the uh, terminal uh, any of the relevant parameters like how many days we want to download or uh, what type of data we want to download and OS and path leave because firstly we store the data locally in the server um, and then from there we, we have a very uh, highly structured uh, folder um, structure so um, it's really easy to get any document based on 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 time like on uh, we rely a lot of on time because uh, these tenders are published every day and they have a date of publishing so that's the way um, to sort this kind of information 
um, sorry, um, Psycho PG2 to interact with uh, Postgres database and uh, the daytime library, um, and also a streamlit that we use for the uh, folder, for the uh, dashboard. Um, currently, we download around 3,000 documents um, daily, um, between 3,000 and 9,000. It depends how many times it runs, but um, one day of data is around a thousand documents and we often download three days uh, just to be sure uh, that we are not, if there is an update from yesterday and so on. And uh, every, once a week we run a, a whole uh, sweep of the last uh, days. Um, so far we've sent uh, 36,000 notifications. Um, basically one notification here is like a new tender uh, to a, a user. Um, and it, that this number is uh, every day growing. Uh, currently, the database holds uh, 3,005 documents. Um, this is basically 10% of the documents that uh, we currently have, um, which is basically the latest um, publication, the latest tenders in, in the system. Um, we have a bigger database that are um, past or, or contracts that are not necessarily tenders uh, and we want to analyze that and we are planning to use Docker for that as well. Um, the current the website serves uh, around 20,000 users uh, per month. Um, yeah, we have the backup, the login and um, our storage um, so far per month is around 2.2 million documents uh, per year. and. Um, we have data since 2019, but we are also have access to data uh, since 2013. Um, so it's a um, an interesting challenge uh, with uh, to, to tackle with with a small server. So far, we kind of divide to conquer. Every time we need to model or think or uh, analyze and explore some data. We basically uh, are very specific on the documents that we want to load and, and then run the, the analysis. Uh, our next steps, well, adding um, new types of data sources to the platform, to the system, uh, to, to facilitate uh, the combination of data to, to users, implement some machine learning models on, on top of the tender data. Um, and do we plan to do that um, also using um, Docker containers and ideally if we create a, one or more machine learning models that will be served uh, via um, container, containerization. Um, another idea is we want to kind of create a, recommend, a recommendation engine to users not only send the alerts but also recommend content based on, on, um, on their uh, needs. An exploration of a streaming uh, data streaming engine because so far we run in batches, we schedule the downloads, but uh, would be maybe uh, useful to to um, be to have an online agent basically querying all the time, and for that we are exploring Kafka, for example, um, in the container uh, version. Some takeaways, uh, hopefully for 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 the audience. Um, when we created this product, um, this service, um, we uh, were advised to validate ideas, and that's a great way to go. Um, we had some conception, preconceptions um, of what is needed, but uh, we, at the beginning, we validated with users, final users, like potential final users, and uh, we collect this feedback. That was uh, massively helpful because you can prioritize what features you could uh, develop first. Uh, refactor often in the early days because um, you implement a, a script or a service but uh, you need to constantly um, adapt and, and see how that integrates with uh, new products or new ideas um, on your on your um, platform or, or service so um, refactor is a great way to uh, maintain the good service but also uh, being more flexible in the future to add and incorporate new ideas to to, to this kind of project and uh, search search for feedback uh, with with users. Thank you very much. Um, 
this is um, the talk I, I had prepared for today.